everybody, welcome to Giftology. I'm John Rulin. This video is made for the skeptics, the people that want to believe that strategic gifting can increase employee engagement and create client referrals without asking, but you're just not ready to go all in yet. You need to conduct a test. Well, watch this video to learn the do's and don'ts of testing strategic gifting as a marketing channel and read the description below for even more resources to make sure that your test goes off right. A strategic gifting test is just like any other marketing test you might do in your business. You need to go in with the right expectations and you need to execute at the highest possible level, even if you have no experience with the channel. The number one thing to do is determine what success looks like for your test. For service provider clients, success is often measured by new referrals. And for business owners gifting to employees, success probably means increased engagement at work or better morale, which is a lot harder to measure. But before you spend a dime, fill in this sentence. I'll know our strategic gifting test was a success if I notice blank. Get really specific about your blank and have realistic expectations. If you're only spending a grand on a test, don't expect 200K in new client business. Next, don't put a premature deadline on measuring ROI. Relationship equity earned through gifting builds over time. It's bad form to expect a sea of new referrals one day after they open your package. So start the test and give it a year to unfold. If you're not even sure if you're gonna be in business a year from now and you're looking for a quick fix, then strategic gifting test, it's probably not right for you. Gift marketing is for the professionals that play the long game, which is how our clients get 10, 20, 30, and even 50X ROI. So you're willing to play the long game. Next, do pick the right recipient. Yes, you can test with just one person and go all out for this one individual, but you need to have the mentality that nothing is too good for them. This should be a person that has high potential for your business. But again, for testing purposes, follow the one-year rule. In order for you to learn anything and measure ROI, you need to know with 90% certainty that this person is still gonna be around and important to your business a year from now. But what if the person you're thinking of testing with is an ideal client or a dream recruit? but they're not connected to your business currently. Hear me loud and clear. Don't test gifting with prospecting. Trust me on this. Testing with prospects is like learning to play basketball and starting with half court shots. I've been doing this for almost 20 years. Prospecting through gifting can be total fool's gold. It seems like the best idea, but it's not. And that's because the best way to get to your ideal clients is through somebody that you're already connected with. Somebody whom your dream connection already knows, likes, and trusts. So only test with somebody in your current, your warm network. If you're gonna use gifting to try and gain access to get someone's attention, that's a pass or fail test. And no matter how it goes, it's not really gonna tell you anything about whether gifting is a scalable channel for your business. Prospect gifting can be hit or miss. And when you're new, it's more miss than hit. You don't want to waste money, which brings me to do set a budget. We recommend no less than $500 as a testing budget. If you're testing out a new marketing channel with display advertising or social media, you wouldn't learn anything from spending 500 bucks, which is why a budget of $1,000 for your gifting test is way better because you'll actually be able to buy nicer things. Each gift should be in the range of $150 to $350, which leads me to my next testing tip. Don't make this a one-off gift. If you expect to make an impact with one gift, then don't even waste your time. Doing anything one time isn't a test, it's a nice gesture. For this test, you're gonna be gifting your VIP recipients every three to four months. If you're new to Giftology, you need to know that these gifts are not gonna be delivered around holidays. I'll put a link in the description that explains proper gift timing. If you screw up gift timing, then you're gonna ruin your test. Do buy all your gifts at once. I recommend at least three for a test, but four is obviously better. You're gonna space them out every two to three to four months. Don't stress about what you're gonna buy them. It's not about picking the right gift, it's about picking the right type of gift. Get them a best in class, practical luxury. Something for their home, something for their kitchen, something they'll use all the time. High quality kitchen products are the best because that'll get them thinking about you every time 
They use them. Now, if you're the type of person who'd rather drink rat poison than go shopping for somebody online, then don't feel like you have to do all the work yourself. Having somebody with expertise do the work for you doesn't make your test any less authentic or effective. In fact, gift fulfillment services like ours tend to be a lot more affordable than people realize, even for testing purposes. If you delegate this to somebody trusted in your office or a family member or anybody that can help make this easier, make it clear to them, no food, no gift cards, and absolutely no company logos. If you ever talk to a gifting naysayer that says, yeah, I tried that once or twice, but I stopped doing it, it's likely they didn't follow that last rule. Watch this video again and spend some time in our other videos to make sure that your testing goes off with the best chance of succeeding. And finally, the most important part of your test, do plan your follow-ups in the schedule. And there's two types of follow-ups. First is a week or two after the delivery of the gift. This is to make sure that they got it and you didn't send it to the wrong place, which I've totally done before. 99 out of 100 times, if you send them something cool when they weren't expecting it, they're gonna beat you to the punch and contact you before you contact them. The second type of follow-up happens in four to maybe six weeks after they got the gift and before you send the next one. Now, these follow-ups are not ass. They're simply genuine thinking of you touch points that you're gonna send between gifts. They can be as simple as, thanks for being my client. A text message or a phone call, if that's more your thing, or an email kind of checking in to see how the things are going. The gifts elevate the relationship. The check-ins elevate the top of mindedness. When you do that, the referrals will come. Don't dilute and ruin your gestures by appearing desperate or looking like a quid pro quo gifter, which is exactly what you're doing if you gift someone and then turn right around and ask them for something the following week. Your most affluent clients won't respect that. So those are the basic do's and don'ts. Feel free to leave a comment below with questions and to read the description for additional notes and resources. Ladies and gentlemen, happy testing.